If you can simplify square roots, well, you're ahead of the game. But how about cube roots like this problem right here, the cube root of 80? So that's where most people may freeze up. But I'm going to show you exactly how to find the cube root of 80 without a calculator. This is really important for those of you that are taking algebra. But before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so one more time, we're trying to simplify the cube root of 80. And if you know the answer, put that into the comment section. But let's go ahead and see exactly how to solve this right now. So before I go over the solution to the cube root of 80, let's make sure you understand square roots and simple cube roots. So we'll start over here with the square root of 16. So what is the square root of 16? Well, the answer is 4. Because the square root is essentially asking us what number times itself gets back to this number underneath the square root. Of course, the answer is 4 because 4 times 4 is 16. Now, this symbol in mathematics is not just a square root symbol. This is called a radical. And you can have different numbers right here outside of this square root or radical. Now, technically, in a square root, there's a little 2 right here, but we never write it. Okay, So when you see a square root or a radical with no number, well, that is the square root. But if you have a little number like 3, well, this is the cube root. So what do you think this is saying? Now, if we had a 2 right here, we're looking for what? We're looking for a number that is multiplied by itself, i.e. two numbers, to get back to this number, the number underneath the square root. So the cube root of 27 is what? Well, the correct answer is 3. And this time we're looking for a number such that when we multiply it by itself three times, we get back to this number. Of course, the answer is 3 because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Okay, so if you understand basic square roots and cube roots, well, that is a good start in order to solve this problem. But there's another way that we can look at square roots and cube roots, and this is using something called rational exponents. And this is a very, very important uh, concept, and one that you learn in most algebra courses, at least first year algebra courses, you should be introduced to this concept. So here is what a rational exponent is. So remember, we have a little two right here with square roots. So the square root of 16 is the same thing as 16 to the 1 half power. So this 2 becomes the denominator, and we're always going to have 1 as the numerator. Now, if you go into your calculator and go 16 to the 1 half power, now, if you're not sure how to use exponents or how to bring up an exponent in your calculator, you want to look for a button like that or some button like this. Okay, so you're going to type in the base. Here, this is 16. And then you'll type in one of these buttons and then type in 1 half. You want to put that 1 half in parentheses. You'll see the answer is 4. Okay, so 16 to the 1 half power is the same thing as the square root of 16. Now, likewise, the cube root of 27, we can write as 27 to the 1 third power. Okay, so of course, 27 to the 1 third power will also be 3. But here is another twist to using rational exponents. Now, I'm saying rational exponents because we're talking about a power here, right? So 16 is the base and 1 half is the exponent. And these exponents are rational numbers, okay? Essentially, that means fractions, okay? Fractions that we can construct using integers. Okay, so there is another additional detail here that we have to understand to solve this problem. And that is we can look for opportunities to express the base of a power as a power itself. So in other words, we can think of 16 as 4 squared and 27 as 3 cubed. And this is going to come in really handy when we're simplifying radical expressions without a calculator. So 4 squared to the 1 half is the same thing as 16 to the 1 half power. 
Now, of course, we know that 16 to the 1 half power is the square root of 16 or 4, but we can find the answer here as well using this format. So 4 squared to the 1 half power is equal to 4 because when you have an outside exponent to an inside exponent or a power to another power, what you can do is simply multiply the exponents. Okay, so 2 times 1 half, of course, is 1. So our answer here is 4 to the first power. So looking at this problem, 3 cubed to the 1 third, we, of course, we know that this is the same thing as the cube root of 27. Of course, the answer is 3, but we can get that answer using this form as well. So 3 cubed to the 1 third, we're going to take this 1 third and multiply it by 3. So that is 1. So the answer is 3 to the first or 3. Okay, so now that you understand rational exponents and how to use not only rational exponents, but how to think about powers in terms of rewriting a base in another power, this is going to help us solve our problem, the cube root of 80. So another thing that we need to understand about square roots and radicals is how to simplify them using a particular property. And this is very, very important. So let's take a look at this simple example, the square root of 20. So we can write the square root of 20 or think of the square root of 20 as the square root of 2 times 10, right? Because 2 times 10 is 20. Or we could think of the square root of 20 as the square root of 4 times 5. Now, thinking of square roots in this way is extremely beneficial. And what we're looking for here is a particular type of factor. So here, 2 and 10 are factors of 20. Now, 4 and 5 are also factors of 20. And what we're looking for here is something called perfect square factors. Perfect square factors. Now, perfect square factors are these type of numbers. 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, etc. Now, what am I talking about here? Well, I'm talking about numbers where we can take the square root of and get lovely integer values, right? Like the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 16 is 4, etc. So these numbers here, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, etc., are perfect square factors, right? These are numbers that we want to be on the lookout in terms of factors. So here we have the square root of 20. I have 2 and 10. Well, these are not perfect square factors. But over here, the square root of 20, I have 4 and 5. Well, 4 is a perfect square factor. So we want to think of the problem this way. Okay, and I'm going to show you why right now. So we have a property of square roots and radicals that when we have factors underneath a square root, like the square root of 20 is equal to the square root of 2 times 10, we can actually break up this big square root into individual square roots, i.e. the square root of 2 times the square root of 10 is equal to the square root of 2 times 10. Now, likewise, the square root of 20 is equal to the square root of 4 times 5. So we could break this up as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Now, this is tremendously advantageous because we know that the square root of 4 is 2. And the reason we want to use this version of the problem is that it has a perfect square factor. So we can simplify the square root of 20 as 2 times the square root of 5. Okay, so you need to understand how to simplify square roots and radicals. And the thing to know is that what we're doing here doesn't only apply with square roots, it applies with all roots, okay, like cube roots. And that is a little bit of a hint on what we're going to do to simplify our problem. So let's get into the solution to the cube root of 80 and apply everything that I covered. So the cube root of 80 is what? Well, we want to think of 80 in terms of factors. Now we have 8 times 10 and 40 times 2. There's a lot of different factors uh, for 80, but we want to think of 8 and 10. Now remember, when we had the square root of 20, we wanted to think of this as the square root of 4 times 5 because 4 is a perfect square factor. 
Now, 4 is great because we can find the square root of 4. Of course, the answer is 2. But because we're talking about the cube root, we want to be thinking about numbers where we can find the cube root of that number easily. All right, so what numbers are those? Well, we looked at 1, right, 27. We can easily find the cube root of 27. That is 3. But there is another number, and that number is 8. Of course, there's infinite numbers that you can find the cube root of. But the cube root of 8 is what? Well, the answer is 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So what we want to do here is look for numbers that we can easily find the cube root of. So you can see here that 8 is one of them. So if we can think of 80 in terms of one of these numbers like 8 or 27 and express 80 in terms of a factor that involves one of these numbers, well, we're going to be able to easily solve this problem. Okay, so 80 is the same thing as 8 times 10. And now let's go ahead and take the next step and think of the cube root of 80 as what? Well, we can think of 8 as 2 cubed. Now, that could help us out if we want to think of this problem using rational exponents. But let's stick with the radical uh, form of this problem and continue on. So the cube root of 80 is the same thing as the cube root of 8 times 10. Now, that property that allowed us to break up the square root of 20 in terms of its factors, right? So we have the square root of four times five, and we could pull apart this one big square root like this, the square root of four times the square root of five. Well, this applies to cube roots as well. So the cube root of 80 is the cube root of eight times 10, and now we can pull apart these cube roots. So the cube root of 80 or the cube root of eight times 10 is equal to the cube root of eight times the cube root of 10. Okay, so now we are almost done because the cube root of 8 is what? Well, it is 2. So our final answer is 2 times the cube root of 10. Now, right here, you could use rational exponents. Matter of fact, you could use rational exponents for the entire problem. So, for example, you could say, well, 8 is the same thing as 2 cubed, and we're finding the cube root of 2 cubed. And then, of course, we're going to multiply this one third times three. That is two to the first or two. So you can approach the problem that way, or you can just kind of work with radicals. But nevertheless, the final answer is two times the cube root of 10. All right. Now, if you got this right, I definitely have to give you a nice little happy face and an A+. Plus. That is fantastic. But this is stuff that you absolutely need to know in algebra and beyond. Now, if you're struggling in algebra, maybe you're having a tough time with radical expressions, square roots, whatever it might be, you definitely have to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. Also, I have a lot of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.